Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the USA to further his studies. Welcome, Kayemba. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm okay. Okay, I'm happy for you. Happy and happy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so okay, much. <laughs> so tell me, how has been your education journey? Uh, my education journey it has been a tough one, filled with uh, highs and lows, mm -hmm. tough times and nice times. It has been a okay. Generally, it's a nice journey. Uh, I started my primary from a, uh, a school called Chitende Primary School. Uh, it's located along Entebbe Road, Chitende Wevajia, uh, towards Entebbe. Uh, that's where I, I, I finished my PLE and I managed to get four grades. It was a nice performance and I was happy for it. For it. Actually, it was a motivation. That's amazing. Yeah, that was a motivation. Okay. So, mm -hmm. because of the wonderful performance, I was able to to secure a scholarship at the secondary school, uh, which covered for my olive education. Uh, through olive, I said I got eight double grades at, at olive. It's still mm -hmm. maximum points. Okay. Yeah. Because of that, I was also able to get uh, another scholarship for, for the advanced level, mm -hmm. which I, I also pursued at Light Academy, and I got 20 points at my A level. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah, and this and you are literally a genius, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they say geniuses don't exist, but yeah. you are an example of a genius. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. now through yeah. this educational journey of yours, yeah. okay, are there things that have motivated you, inspired you? Okay, yeah. things and people as well. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Could you name some of those things that have inspired you and the people that have inspired you through your educational yeah. journey? From now there will be so many, but maybe I can, I, I can hit on a few. Okay. Uh, for example, like one of the breakthroughs through my education has, has been Get Deployed Academy because that's an institution having a, a very wonderful staff of te teachers. Uh, everyone is cooperative, starting from the top administrators to the, through, the, through, through the teachers to non-staff, non non-teaching non staff, to the first students. Everyone is cooperative, like trying to help each other out, working, working together to, to, to learn and grow as a community. Uh, I was able to learn a lot from, from, from my teachers, uh, from my first students, and I was actually able to make many connections, many important connections. Actually, I call it a family, mother family. That actually was me, another family to me. Mm -hmm. uh, that introduced me to many things, and among them, it's actually one of, the few, one of the few schools in the country which actually participates in very many Olympiads and competitions uh, and projects. Uh, among them, actually, the Academy provides you with a variety, a variety. So there's so many. When you arrive here, you find yourself somewhere. You find yourself like into some kind of project in, or into some kind of Olympiad that you actually love and like to participate in. So. When I got here, actually, I used to like mathematics from my, from my, my primary school. Mathematics was my strength, and I used to like it so much. So when I got here, I found like to a school participating in a number of Olympiads in mathematics, like the math contest, the mathmania contest, uh, the IMO, many of them, many of them. And that's actually been so important in shaping my education career. Mm -hmm. Okay, like uh, speaking of inspirations and mm -hmm. motivations, mm -hmm. also to some extent, family comes in. So, do you think family, your family could mm -hmm. be, your family or your family background could be one of the factors that led to your success in your studies? Yeah, of course. Of course. How has your family supported you as a student? I think it's really hard to, to have such a great achievements without family behind you. Mm -hmm. uh, because from in my since my primary education, like in case I did something good in class, mom used to get me something small. I was told twice, okay, you should get something like a new pencil or a new pen. Yeah, like in case you go to school and get a, and pass a paper well, even like like before P before P seven or sort of, I should get, get you something new, maybe a new geometry set. Like only that could motivate you. It, it show that maybe there's something good in, in doing this in, in, in schooling. Uh, like, going to school with a, with a new pen, yeah, okay, it's something really small and seems negligible, but it, motiv it, it, it motivates you somehow. Uh, okay. su such small things motivated me to work hard in my classes, uh, and I, I ended up passing. Even in my high school, my family was always there for me. 
every time, every time there's a challenge at school, maybe I need, I need something, they're always there for me, they're always there to support me. Uh, in always, both financially and, uh, and socially and morally. You talked about um, the mathematics contest, mm -hmm. okay? How many schools participated in this contest? Oh, the math contest. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Math contest is a, it's a, national, it's a national contest. Okay, I participated in, in, in many kinds of contests. Like, as I told you, the academy uh, emphasizes participation in uh, Olympiads, um, projects, uh, and, com and such competitions. So, okay. one of them was the Mathmania math contest. That was, it was a regional contest. Uh, mostly schools in the, in the central participated in, in the Mathmania math contest, like Galaxy, uh, Light Academy, Horizon. Then, uh, the, Ghana math the Ghana math contest. That's a national contest, and okay. actually, very many schools are, are, are all, all around the country participating in, in the in the math contest. Schools from the from the east, like in the entire school, schools from the north, from the central. Yeah, so very many schools participate in the contest. With uh, the, the number of, of students can, can be over a thousand students. So, as mm. you were preparing for this contest, mm. how did you prepare for it exactly? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a tricky question because there's no exact way of preparing for the contest because. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a question where questions can reoccur. Questions are, are usually from different fields of math mathematics. So it's hard to like to get a strategy of, of revising. But there are some techniques which are actually important in solving pro questions in that contest, which are actually, which are actually given to us by the by the by, by, by our teachers. So it's sort of about practicing. Uh, the more you practice for those que que questions, the more you get ready for. What can okay? The more you get ready for, the more you learn how to how to handle different situations okay. while answering the questions. Okay. Mm. Now, uh, when you went for this contest mm -hmm. from your school, mm -hmm. how many students participated in from this my school? contest? Yes, from Light uh, Academy. There were around fifteen. Around yeah. fifteen. If I remember well, around fifteen. Okay. So, did mm. you find this contest very hard, or it was as easy as taking candy from a baby? Because uh, this is genius. <laughs> I mean, you got four mm. in P7, mm. and then you got eight in Senior Four, mm. then you got twenty points mm. in Senior Six. I mean, that is genius. So, <laughs> it's like taking mm. candy from a baby. So, did you find this yeah. very difficult, the, the contest? Uh, <clears throat> for the contest, the first time I participated in the in the, the mathematical contest, it was actually challenging because the questions were not similar to anything I'd, I'd seen before. It was, it was really challenging. But uh, in sub subsequent practice, like in those questions, you get that it's actually it's challenging, but what makes it interesting is the fact that it's challenging. Yeah, you know, like you have got to always devise new, like your own ways of solving a given, a given question. And that's actually like it. It triggers the creativity in you, like you, 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 you learn to think outside the books, sort of. Yeah. Actually, for the first time, it was so challenging, but I was amazed to be among the first 20 still. Okay, yeah. the time that you won the contest, okay. like, uh, was this your third time that you participated, or uh, I was in how many times have you participated in this contest? I first participated in the math contest in my senior two, mm -hmm. but I won in my, my, my senior four. So that was my third time, I guess. All right. Yeah. So what does it feel like mm -hmm. being the only special mm -hmm. kid that won this challenge? Actually, it, the feeling it gives you is like all the hard work you've put in is, is really worth it. Like you really feel like I've really worked, for, for, I've really worked so hard to, update, to achieve this and I've achieved it. Like you, you, you feel happy and motivated to pursue even bigger challenges in the future because you know, there's a possibility of succeeding. You, you know, you, 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 you can be the next success. Yes, it was actually a nice feeling. And it, it was motivation, motivation to me and to my fellow students who I started with in, in class, who we worked hard with. Yeah, it was actually a nice achievement for all of us. Do you deserve mm. this scholarship, you as you? It's just like when somebody mm. asks you, uh, do you feel you deserve this scholarship? And then you're like, no, I don't think I deserve it. For you, do you feel like you deserve this? Uh, to answer that question, it feels the same. Okay, like recently someone asked me, like, what do you, what do you really think got into MIT? So that's a, a very hard question to answer because part of the application, the application has many. Uh, it is actually a long process, uh, d asking for different, different, different aspects of you. Like, they want to know about how you spend your, your free time. 
they don't know about how you make your research, they don't know about like many things about you, like how 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 ready are you to 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 to, to, to go into something that you, you have no idea about. So there are many things. So and it's, it's not it's not really easy to pick to, to pick out a single aspect of, of me that that I did this because of this I was able to get into into MIT. Not that I was the best in the contest because. That's an university which, which receives application from from thousands of students. Like like last year, the admission rate was, was just three percent. Means in every hundred, they choose only three students. That's that's really a, a very small number. So, so it's w like you're lucky with all, to get this scholarship. With all those th those statistics, and I was able to admit, I feel like I, I deserve it. Okay. It means they, they really considered many many, th many aspects, and all of the aspects they saw that I was worth being in, 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 in the institution. And how did your parents react when they found oh, out that you God, got this God. scholarship? Oh my God, my mom was so, 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 so happy. She was so, so happy. She was like, did yeah, they that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> did they carry in some way? Uh, okay. When I saw the, the news that I was admitted, I wasn't with them. But I could just hear it like on the on, on phone. She was just so happy. She was like, yeah, yes. Okay. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was your reaction? I mean, the excitement that comes with it. Personally, I would run and hit trees and somersault. And what, what did uh, you do? When I got the uh, the admission message, the, the first time I, I, I saw it, I couldn't believe it. It, it, it was really true. To, uh, I was admitted into MIT. I was okay. like, can this ever be? Mm -hmm. I, I first opened the portal like five times to confirm that uh, yeah, I've been admitted. Then I was like, yes, I was so happy. Make sure it's not a scam. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my friends were so happy with me. Uh, it was just a nice experience. Did you do any kind of celebration? Uh, like a party sort of. Mm, anything, mm. anything to celebrate your achievement. Yeah, I celebrated with, with my friends. <coughs> okay, we went out for a, 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 a party at the, at the B sort of. Okay. Mm. So apart from this scholarship, are there any mm. other kind of achievements that you've had? Apart from this scholarship. Yeah, like big achievements you've had in your life apart from this yeah. particular scholarship. First of all, getting player academy was a very big achievement because uh, my background. Like at home, my home wasn't so well off economically. So even attending high school was, I wasn't so sure that over the attending high school in such a nice school. But when I got into the academy in a scholarship, that was a, 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 a really breakthrough in, in my academic career. It was a really good achievement because I was, I was able to interact with, with with a team of the best teachers in the country. Uh, with, with I, 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 I was able to make make friends with, 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 with nice people. Uh, I was exposed to, to a, a, a lot of research opportunities, so there are, there are very many doors that are open, open, open for me just through getting admitted into a light academy. Uh, among other achievements, I was able to qualify for the International Mathematics Olympiad. Okay. That That's was amazing. another another interesting, okay. interesting, interesting journey. Because okay. the IMO is say, an international Olympiad, like, hosted by different countries, like when I first met, it, it was hosted by Russia, though it was through COVID and it was online, but still. So each country sends their basic mathematicians. From, so me being on the, on the team that represented Uganda, it's like me being on the, I was among the basic mathematicians in the country. I was like, wow. You're yeah, the king. Th that was a very good <laughs> achievement for me and I was so happy for it. Okay. Yeah. All right, so apart from uh, mm. education, mm. like they say, work without play makes John a dull boy. Mm. So apart from education, are there any kind of sports like you participate in? Yeah, actually, I love soccer so much. I love soccer. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, actually. Uh, uh, have you made I a name in soccer like you have made in academics? No, not, in, not, <laughs> not really. Even in school, I, 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 didn't, I didn't used to play professional soccer, but I used to play it for fun. Yeah, like maybe... On the weekends with my friends, we go and play soccer uh, for like an hour, of, of, an hour or two. Yeah. I also used to play chess. Yeah, and I like, I like chess. It's a game of strategy. Like, it's a, that's it's why a game you're a genius. That's which why you're smart. Critical thinking. Because you play chess. Yeah. No, <laughs> that's not the only reason as to why. Because <laughs> it involves using actually. a lot of your brain. Uh, yeah. So, so that so makes you a genius. So, so why wouldn't you beat the math contest? <laughs> <laughs> Respect, King. Mm. Respect. Okay, yeah, so you. besides sports mm. or soccer, mm. um, are there any things you do during your leisure time? How do you spend your leisure time? Uh, actually, uh, mostly uh, I spend my leisure time surfing on the internet, maybe 
was thinking about Christmas. Like researching, researching about mathematicians of the ancient times. Okay, I like my. I like mathematics, so I really like to know how mathematics has, has, has been developing through time. Yeah, so I really, I research about mathematicians uh, who lived before, and the trend that math that math is, is most likely to take. Uh, I also read I also read many articles uh, about mathematics and other related fields. Uh, I also like sometimes reading about psychology. Yeah. Okay, so what is your career goal? What is that job that you have always wanted to have? Mm. Mm. I've always wanted to do, I've, I've always wanted to be uh, a computer scientist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Computer scientist. And yeah. you are mm. heading there. Do you see yourself going there? Yeah, I see myself going there. Because, uh, like, being the best university of technology in the world, uh, of course, gives me uh, an edge towards achieving my goal. Okay. Mm. How do you spend your time at home mm. during your holidays, through your whole educational journey? How do you spend your time at home? Uh, my day at home isn't uh, a fixed day. Okay, like, I haven't got fixed t that at this time I'll be doing this, at this time I'll be doing this, but there are many things involved that, uh, okay, uh, sometimes I find myself working with my mom at a farm. Uh, sometimes I find, uh, sometimes, uh, I find myself with my siblings, maybe, maybe playing soccer, maybe, maybe just chatting around. Yeah, uh, but one thing, I, one thing I always keep in mind is that I always keep my, like, I always spare some time for making research uh, about certain, certain things. Mostly about, I told you I like maths, yeah. So I always find some spare time uh, during the, the day researching about. Uh, m mathematics, maybe uh, practicing, practicing math, uh, and maybe reading my school notes as well. Okay. Mm. Now every success comes mm. with some kind of challenge. Like mm. nothing comes on a silver plate. Mm -hmm. So I'm very sure that some of some challenges you have gone through as a student. Mm. So would you mind mentioning some of those challenges you've gone through as a student? Uh, one of the challenges I've uh, experienced, uh, you know, when I was in my uh, high school. As I told you, I participated in math in ma math contest for, for my level one. I went on my phone for okay. So the school, my parents, uh, and my first friends were, were expecting a, a lot from me. And one of those was 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 uh, participating in the, in the international math Olympiad. But in my phone four, I tried going for the I tried giving it a shot, yeah, like, like going for the Olympiad. But unfortunately, I didn't pass through. So that was a really challenging moment in my life. So you know, like everyone is, everyone believes in you. They know like, this kind of person is gonna make it through. Like this kind of, you, 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 they really believe that you're good enough, and, and, and they're really gonna go through. And then it turns out you didn't go through. So it was really a challenging moment. It was really tough. That's the time you, you, you begin doubting yourself. Be like, if they, they really believe in, but I didn't. So mm -hmm. am I, 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 I? Am I really what they believe? So it was really a tough time, but I, I didn't give up. I knew. Maybe it wasn't my time. Maybe I wasn't I wasn't ready enough for the for the for the Olympiad, and I still worked on. Uh, I, I still worked hard, and, and the good thing was that the, the, the next year I was able to, to qualify for the Olympiad, and I first in it. Okay. Mm. Uh, did you have any kind of financial challenges in terms of fees, stuff like that? depression did you ever go through depression as a student because mm. there's so many students out there that mm. go through depression silently in most mm. cases when people don't know they are stressing probably lack this and that mm. like um, study wise they don't know what to do they don't know how to they, they just need that support you know mm. all students need like counseling or something to get through school have mm. you gone through some of those uh, for the financial financial bit of it, uh, maybe when I was in my primary school, uh, time came like towards the, the, towards the end of my primary school, towards PLE. Then my parents couldn't, couldn't afford the school fees, they should strike for them. So I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. So uh, I tried looking around for any a, a, any available help, but I couldn't find any. But luckily, the the the, the, the found out about it, and I was able to, 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 to from a scholarship. So it, it didn't affect me that, that much. 
Then I, I came to, to high school as I was lucky. I was in a, a, a scholarship, so I don't think I've, I've really suffered financial financial problems. Okay. Then for for the bit of stress, okay, according to to, to the way I see it, what may cause it is maybe <coughs> maybe uh, you don't know how to study for how to plan for your classes, maybe. So what I, I usually used to do is. I used to plan, plan my day. I used to plan my day, but then planning, planning, planning your day usually makes you feel like you're sort of you're restricting yourself. You're you're like maybe you like to do something, but but because you've planned your day, then you want to do it. So that's a wrong of planning. So I, I used to give it this approach. Uh, I used to imagine there's some, someone I care about, someone I really love, maybe your son or something, and then you, you, you you'd like to help help them plan their day. So of course you don't like them to keep st stressed out, uh, maybe like overworking over themselves, or you don't like them to not to study. So you, so you strike a balance between the two. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I, I used to do. I used to be like, so I said I I I I, I said for these hours, then maybe I I I do I, I refresh for the, for this time. Maybe I'll do this to as as well for for the study. Yeah, and I think that really helped me a lot because there's always. This, I wasn't stressed like in two so much in two books or like I wasn't leaving my classes my classes away. Okay, so apart from mm. um, apart from that, have you been bullied before in school? No, or you've been the bully? <laughs> <laughs> Do I look a bully? Have you been bullied? You've been the bully. No, okay. Actually, no, no, never been me. bullied. Yeah. Okay, so before we wrap up mm. this, would you mind describing yourself? Who is Kayemba Shafik? Uh, <coughs> Emma Shafik, first of all, is a Ugandan, proud Ugandan, mm -hmm. uh, who was born and lives in Chitende, Bwebadja. Uh, he likes maths, mm -hmm. and he likes soccer, uh, and he loves matoke. Mm, okay. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to miss it when I go, the, when, when I go the side. Okay, so that is what we had with Kayemba Shafik, who has, of course, won a scholarship at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the USA, and we wish him the best. And remember, education is the passport to the future, and the future belongs to those that prepare for it today. Remember, the roots of education are bitter, and the fruits are sweet. And just like Shafik, you just never know what you'll be. This is UBC TV. Stay tuned. <laughs> So you should remember that the education and learning just never ends. It continues until you probably die. And joining me on the show right now is the Director of Studies of Light Academy by the name Waswa Mutivi, who is of course going to take us through the whole process here in Light Academy. And of course, he is one of those people that has contributed to the success of Kayemba Shafik, and he's going to tell us more. Welcome to the show. You're most welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. So, Waswa, tell us what your role is as the Director of Studies in Light Academy. Well, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. Um, the role of the Director of Studies, particularly our role, is to oversee academic excellence in school, um, good discipline of all our students, and of course seeing our students being socially responsible and morally upright. That is basically what our department as the director of studies overseas in school. Okay. Yes. All right, so Waswa, there are times where students are not performing well and probably failing a lot. True. And we have seen that in some schools they have mm. counseling sessions, they have Definitely. counselors that talk to them. Mm. So does Light Academy have these counselling and guidance sessions for students based on their studies and performance? Yeah, well, um, Light Academy, we're actually privileged that first and foremost our numbers are a little bit small. Um, you'll find that our class population is around 35 to 40. So if you're having such a class population, it becomes quite easy for the teacher to interact with the students. Even if there are some students who are a little bit behind, the teacher can easily maneuver and then find a way of helping them. Even when it comes to students who are not performing well, even after all this, we tend to organize extra classes, we teach at night, um, sometimes we even go deep into the night to teach. Um, but most importantly, we try to uh, encourage our students to get to closer to the teachers because the teachers have the knowledge and the students want the knowledge. And furthermore, we also call upon our students to engage into these discussions. It is very important because sometimes students may 
may not relate well with the teachers. So whereas when a student gets closer to his friend, for example, Shafiq has, one, has been one of the best students in our school, and majority of the students were forming discussion groups with him, and he has really helped many students, in particular his year. So many students, because of these discussion groups, have managed to benefit from his knowledge. So basically, it's all about teachers, it's all about discussions, it's all about commitment from that student who has a problem. It all starts from him. If this student is really willing, everything is going to be open. So attitude is really key to this. Okay, and speaking of the contest, mm. the national contest that these students participate in, yeah. like how often do they participate in these contests and how important are these mm. contests to them? Really, these contests are really very important. You see, these days, um, education is more more to the side of what you can do than actually what you can replicate. And that's what we are trying to do as Light Academy. Students shouldn't only be in books. Yes, books are really important because even you just said it earlier, you know, if you want to succeed in life, then academics is very important. But then also there's this other side, the side of project work, the side of co-curricular activities. So when it comes to this, um, we normally participate each and every in these international competitions. We have national competitions, we have international competitions. One of them is the math contest. Now this math contest is normally held normally every year and we have been um, participating. Thousands of our students are participating in these contests. And really you can see that some students have some hidden talents. You'll find that a student is not good in this area, but when it comes to mathematics, he's really good. We have seen such students and that is one of the platforms where really they can thrive and show the world what they can do. So it is really important for these students to engage in these competitions and also we have internal competitions. So these internal competitions um, give us students who are going to participate in the national competitions and then after that we can even go to international competitions. Not only the math competitions, we have science, we have environment, we have English, we have drama, we have business, all these competitions are there globally and really students are different. A student may be good in drama and he can excel there. So we try to encourage our students as much as possible to participate in these competitions and actually we do have them each and every year in our school. Yes. Okay, so Shafiq's winning of this scholarship, where does it put the school right now? Of course, it, it is a big achievement for us as a school, um, but of course he's not the first student to win, win a scholarship in that kind of sense. We have so many of our students in USA, in Europe, and majority of them actually have passed through these through this, um, contests, through these projects, through these international competitions. There are really many out there. The list is just endless. Shafiq is just one of them, and we have so many out there. But it is really a big achievement for the school, uh, to his parents, even to Shafiq himself. We are really proud of him. He has really been an excellent student, very hardworking, God-fearing, very disciplined, and really the, we wish him all the best wherever he will be going. Through this journey of Shafiq, like um, as the director of studies, of course, together with the teachers, the yes. times you get to realize or pick and see that this student is performing well in this and this and that. Mm -hmm. They're doing this and this, like these are some of our bright students. Mm -hmm. So Shafiq being one of them, yeah. how have you as a school administration mm -hmm. helped him through this journey until up to where he is? Yes, um, Shafiq, first and foremost, um, we managed to offer some scholarships to underprivileged students, of course, who are academically good. Not even academics only, even when someone is really disciplined, it can qualify him a scholarship in our school. So Shafiq, we, he came to this school in 2015, of course via scholarship, he got four aggregates, and his parent managed to come and approach us. Of course they couldn't afford, and as a school we tried to give them a helping hand, because he scored four aggregates in primary, and we worked with him really, like I said, he has been hardworking, he has been an example to the rest of the students. And because of that, he managed to excel in senior four. Again, he got 18-8. Actually, that year, that was 2018, our school was the best in the entire country. We managed to get several students who got 18-8, and Shafiq was one of them. And um, again, we gave him a scholarship in senior five, and she was doing PCM, that is physics, chemistry, mathematics, and ICT. And via that PCM, still he managed to score 20 points, 
um, even with the challenges of COVID-19, because for him even he couldn't afford online studies sometimes. But amidst all those challenges, he managed to get 20 points as well. So as a school, of course, we gave him the platform. And even after that, we went ahead because we have been supporting him in all these competitions. Um, we have made sure that each and every competition, for as long as he's interested, we are there to support. Not only him, even other students. For as long as you really have what it takes, for as long as you have the interest, the school is really open to help in all angles. And, and of course, that's what has been happening to Shafiq. He has a lot of interest in mathematics. And our work is very simple. If you're interested, we can support you. Um, then after that, after his senior six, you got 20 points, of course. We have a career department. We manage to um, secure some scholarship opportunities for him, of course. Um, but of course, it was really a tedious process. He had to go through several, several interviews and several writings and several defenses. And of course, as a school, we have been helping him in that. And eventually, he secured that scholarship. So really, of course, we, we appreciate him as our student and also want to appreciate the school administration because it really takes a lot. Even as he's going to the United States of America, as a school, we are still supporting him in terms of his travel because actually the scholarship was independent of the travel. So we actually do it to all our students. We want to follow them until the end of their academic journey because school is not only senior and senior six. We must go beyond the classroom to ensure that our students succeed in life. So basically that's how we are, we are trying to help him even other students in the school. Okay, um, every school has uh, different standards True. and expectations they yeah. want from students. True. So as Light Academy, what are some of those expectations, what are expected of the students when joining the school? Mm. What are some of those things that mm. are needed from the students? Yeah, well, um, basically I can say we want three students from our students. One, we want to build an academically competent student. A student who can go out there and compete with the rest in terms of the academic excellency. Then two, want to build a socially responsible student, a student who is responsible in terms of, you know, honesty, in terms of these other values in life, because sometimes it is not all about books. And then uh, finally, want to build a morally upright student, students who are really disciplined, students who can work with other members of the community, students who have respect for humanity and human life. So basically, those are the three values on which our school is built. Okay. Yeah. So to join the school, what is required of a student in terms of aggregate performance and all that? Well, of course, it fluctuates depending on the national performance in the primary. But of course, of recent, um, we normally look at aggregate eight to nine. Yes, aggregate to nine. But of course, most importantly, the discipline is crucial because this is a boys' school and we look at discipline as a paramount issue. So the aggregate nine to eight. But of course, depending on what is happening nationwide, and discipline is key. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, Waswa. Okay. Thank Glad you very much. Glad having you on the show. Thank you very much for hosting us. Okay. Well, like I mentioned before, education is a tool that breaks all barriers, and Shafiq is proof of that. Like, yes, sometimes we talk about geniuses, we talk about great people, we talk about sharp people, very smart people, but this is a whole definition of smart. I mean four aggregates for P7 and then he gets eight aggregates for senior four and then he has 20 points and now here he is getting a scholarship in one of the most important schools in the world. So you could be one of those students as well. Stay tuned, this is the Education Forum on UBC TV. <laughs> So every school and institute, of course, needs certain personalities for the smooth running of the school. And joining me right now is a deputy head teacher of Light Academy. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Introduce yourself to the people. My name is Kasumba Abut. I'm the deputy teacher of Light Academy Secondary School. Uh, nice to be here this okay. evening. Yes. All right. Abut, what is your role as the deputy head teacher of Light Academy? That's a big question, mm -hmm. ideally, but uh, I'm, of course, deputizing the head teacher in most of the roles uh, pertaining uh, the smooth running of the school. Generally, we have to follow each and everything pertaining the running of the school. Mm. 
So specific objectives, uh, when you look at academic, you can follow, help him follow their, the syllabus, the teachers, uh, the non-teaching staff, and everything that goes in school. We are there to oversee whatever is going in school. Yeah. All right, Abdul, give us some brief, uh, brief history mm. of Light Academy, when it started, what uh, inspired mm. the starting of the school. Yeah, Light Academy is a specifically a boys' secondary school, uh, which started in 1999. And we offer, of course, the UNEP curriculum. But of course, in the UNEP curriculum, we beef it up with the other things. For example, we have co curricular activities, we have uh, STEM fairs that we bring in to our students, we participate in Olympiads, and uh, very many other activities, co-curricular activities that go on in school. Yes. <coughs> so, so many schools have uh, particular things they are ident identified with, mm. like probably sports, it mm. could be um, academic-wise. So there's something unique about every school or mm. institute. So what makes Light Academy unique and different from other schools? You know, first of all, the discipline we inculcate in our students, it is important because it helps us improve the academics. Because, you know, discipline works hand in hand with that, with academics. So first of all, we deal with the disciplinary part. And there, uh, of course, to monitor the discipline, we have other things that we add on it because uh, if you have a student who is, a, for example, an idle mind is hard to control. So in school, we have academics, but as you look at our program, uh, we situated in a way that we have lessons from morning up to uh, 4.30. And in between those lessons, we have breaks. So those breaks enable students to refresh. And then after the refreshment, and then after the lessons, we have co-curricular activities that take place. Now those co-curricular activities help us in monitoring discipline. As you know, they are tired by the moment they start in the morning four up to four thirty. I mean from eight up to four thirty they are busy with academic issues. And those non academic issues from uh, from four thirty up to around five thirty. They are engaged in various activities. For example, club activities. Under club activities we have very many we have uh, the genius minds, we have uh, Chess, chess clubs. What's we have the genius uh, mind all about. Genius minds about uh, puzzles, and uh, they can be like puzzles, and these puzzles are just helping the child to develop their brains. So they can be puzzles. For example, it can be a mathematical puzzle. It's a combination. Sometimes it's called mathematical. Sometimes it is letters, and they, they may be maybe also some combination of figures which they make up to develop their what? Their minds. So, like the word, genius minds. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, that explains why Shafiq is a genius. True. Okay. Uh, then other, like robotics clubs, we have also robotics. Robotics, I think you understand. It's a combination of, uh, uh, <coughs> it's a computer knowledge and also uh, joining the parts, some, some little bit, some knowledge of programming is required there come up with a program such that a robot can run. So that one is also there between that time. So between 4.30 and 5.30, that's when you have the club time. So you find that more, all the students are engaged. Those who uh, can participate in, for example, football, also that time. Those who are in the football club can also go for the training for football. Basketball club, uh, we have some other clubs like uh, uh, math club, science club. Then also we look at the STEM as science, technology, engineering, and mathematics that time. It's used also for engaging the students in the various activities such that we can showcase in the STEM fairs. As you know, we have STEM fairs every year. So students showcase those things. And uh, that's when... What do they, they showcase during the STEM fairs? The STEM fairs? Yeah. They showcase projects, of course. They are projects we... Okay, it's like this. STEM, we are preparing students in uh, handling project work. So a student comes up with a project, and that project is uh, monitored by, of course, the teachers. Then when he says it's okay, teachers can view during the STEM fair, like we have a fair, we invite parents to come in school, and they can see 
those various it's like an uh, exhibition like an exhibition yes exactly so out of those uh, exhibitions of course there are judges and judges can say that okay this is the best the best project then the best project of course we award we have uh, awards we give for example we say this one is a gold winner this one is a silver winner bronze then from those ones uh, we select those projects which are going to represent the school in these olympiads you hear of for example uh, in espo eh? the i can say in espo as in the netherlands uh, we had the uh, golden climate eh? then then gisu take gisu take i think you know about it because for it is in uganda here but the one you're talking about golden climate is in kenya so we used to send students there to represent our school again there. I think Shafiq also like um, Mathmania, it was in, a, it used to be in Turkey by then, but again, it was brought back to, we made another one in Nijinja again. Uh, so such competitions, uh, we are in position to handle that uh, issue of Olympiads. So that time from 4.30 up to 5.30. We specifically use it for uh, bringing up that part. Yes. All right. So mm. what is the ratio of the students in the class and how effective is this arrangement? Yeah, that's a very good studies? question. Uh, in our school, that's also part of what is uh, making students also gain because when you look at the teacher-student ratio is low. Our classes are from 35 to 36. The maximum is 36 in a class. So you find that some classes are between 30 to 36. Maximum is 36 in a class. Yes. So because of that uh, low number, you find that teacher can interact with almost every student in a class. So that one improves. Even if a student can be weak, but his performance can easily be boosted because of that student-teacher what ratio. On top of that, we have extra lessons we give our students extra lessons and remedials also we have a timetable we make timetables for those remedials for those students who are not pa performing very well in the given what uh, subjects so those remedials are organized in a way that uh, they're on subject le level for example if such students aren't performing very well in mathematics then we get those students who are not performing very well they identify the areas where they need help then we select a teacher who's supposed to take them through those what that area mm -hmm. then you find that it makes uh, the students improve generally in academics okay mm. and academic wise how mm. do you motivate the students to compete amongst each other for motivation we have uh, very many ways of course motivation is motivation mm -hmm. but uh, it starts from the teachers in class uh, we usually encourage them to motivate their learners while they are doing lessons you find that uh, <coughs> teachers can uh, uh, those small small things for example a student can just give an answer if you don't just uh, give positive response to that student again may demoralize him so that is the encouragement starts from class but as a as a school we usually organize dinners for students who are performing well for example this year we identify those who are performing better in most of the classes. For example, senior one, senior two, senior three, the best students. What we did for them was we organized small gifts like school books, pens, pencils, and a dinner, of course. They shared a dinner with us. But also those ones who are not performing, for example, well, we usually talk to them. We bring them up and say, okay, you people, you come and we also have a dinner. You talk to us. Tell us what is the what? What is the problem? What is the challenge? Then we share with them. So through those dinners, they can air out again their problems. And once you know their problems, then you know how to what? To handle and help them. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now after that, uh, after Shafiq mm. has put the school on the map right now, mm. and after you his achievements, okay, map. yes. Mm. And mm. right now, mm. what is your plan as a school to make other students follow his footsteps? Yeah, of course, when we, it's not only Shafiq that is going to, okay, for MIT, it's Shafiq, the first one, going to MIT. But for other universities abroad, we've been having students going there. Because we have uh, a team which is working on career, 
guidance as far as our students is what are concerned. So they usually guide them on which universities can take them up, which courses they can study. So through that guidance, really students have a broader perspective of the outside world and what is going on. So through that, uh, other students are encouraged because we invite in other people, like prominent people in school, like professors, they talk to the boys, they are encouraged to take on even those hard things. Now, like uh, we used to sponsor also like uh, the training for international, I mean for the math contest. The Uganda math contest was, tra the training was done from this school. You find that that one alone is an encouragement to the students because if they see others, students in Uganda who are going to represent Uganda, training from here, they feel encouraged because they see that things are really working out for them. So the government of Uganda is encouraging the taking on of sciences in mm. schools. So are you prepared for this journey? Yes, of course. Our school is more than enough uh, prepared to take on the promotion of sciences. One, because uh, as I told you about the classroom ratio, really, that one, we, if you have, for example, 35, grouping becomes easy. Because when you look at the new curriculum, it requires grouping of students and uh, for sciences the facilities in school are really enough because what governs the science is the laboratory if you have a well equipped laboratory and plus the science teachers which are needed to of course take through the students curriculum you find that the professionalism of the teachers we're having we are more than enough equipped to take on the what the sciences and already Kaimba Shafik is a is an example showing that really. And when you look at also our uh, students, which universities they have been taking on or which courses they have been taking on, really, science is at the top. Though we are saying, we're not saying that we're not performing well in arts, we are doing also our best. And I know, uh, given, you see, how do you get a school that this school is uh, really taking on, is improving in sciences? Look at the students and look at the intake. Do you understand the intake I'm talking about? For example, if a student is uh, brought into your school and he has aggregate, for example, five or six or seven or division four, can you convert a division four to a better mark? And you find that students here, we don't mind about the cutoffs, really. It's, an, it's something, but you find that even if a student is a division three material, we can shape that student from division three to come wow. to a better what? A division one okay. that is an improvement and for us that is working for us yes so you find that when you improve that student who has come with a, a worse grade to a better grade really you're doing better and also as far as science is concerned really the subjects are can I say here as a school we usually perform better when you compare sciences and we, com we perform better in sciences as compared to what Arts. And also the government was encouraging mm. uh, uh, schools mm. to teach life skills. And speaking of life skills, mm. I mean uh, farming, tailoring and mm. different things mm. like that. Mm. So as Light Academy, do you instill some of these skills in yes. the students? Yes, yes. Now, like I told you, madam, mm. uh, these skills we have, I told you we have uh, football. For football, we have what we call uh, the football club. We have also people who are connecting these people who are playing football, these students of ours who are playing football to people who are having professional football uh, teams outside. So we find that that is one way. Of course, we have the agriculture clubs. We also have the art club, the music, dance and drama club. We find that all that can, combined can uh, bring out all those other skills we need. So it's not that... We are focusing only on academics, but also those are non academic issues during that time from 4th that I told you, from 4th to 5th, we're also looking at those other what? Disciplines. So generally, a combination of those, of those clubs, those club activities, entrepreneurship club, I, ju I just mentioned a few, but really the list is what? Yes, Long. Yes. Mm. Okay, so mm. based on our conversation, mm. uh, it seems like... Uh, there's so much concentration put in the sciences. So where does it leave those that are doing arts? Generally, we are looking at uh, the entry 
of students. Now, okay, if you get a student who is, uh, look at the entry requirement of the student. If you get an art student who has performed arts uh, very poorly, for example, with a five, a credit five in each of those subjects, you find that you don't get uh, the cream of an art student. So, basing on the type of uh, students that we receive who want to offer fine arts, you find that we don't get the best students. And that's why you find that, again, the performance is not so bad, but at least it's better. I'm not saying that our students are not doing law or they're not doing uh, uh, those courses or procurement of those other courses. No, they are doing them. But uh, here, what I was saying was that uh, you also look at uh, very few students these days like to take uh, arts. I don't know, maybe because of the policy government has brought or because of the nature. You find that in our school, we get very few students with very good grades wanting to do what? arts. Those who want to do arts, uh, those ones with somehow uh, schools grades are low, and you find that we really try to see that really they get good what? They also grades. get good what? Grades. But also, uh, some of our students have joined the law. We have lawyers. We have a number of them. And uh, they have been admitted also in uh, government, government universities like Makerere. Yes, in Barara. I mean also in uh, uh, UCU. Some of them are there. But I'm sure with arts also we are doing our our best to see that also uh, we're not totally saying that the ones who are doing art are uh, totally out of the of the of the curriculum no we're also trying our best to see that they really also have like the same programs we do for arts i mean for sciences we do the same for what for arts and i'm sure if we really uh, someone is serious he can also get good grades yes and they get them mm. Like the last year, the best person in our school uh, got 19. Yes, got 19. A, A, B. Mm. Yes, for, for arts. I'm talking about arts. Sciences, of course, was 20, but arts got A, A, B. Was doing, I think, history, entrepreneurship, and divinity. Mm. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you, Abdu. Mm. You're welcome. Okay. So we have heard from the administration and just like Shafiq, there are other students that would like to reach that level or probably get a scholarship. They are motivated and inspired by Shafiq and so many other students that have made it education wise. And now we are going to engage some of the students to tell us what their education journey has been, what their expectations are and what their dream careers probably are. So joining me on the show here is a student from Light Academy. Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. What's your name? My name is Subuga Abdulatif. I'm in senior six. Okay. Subuga, so, you're in senior six. Yeah. So what uh, what is your combination right now? What combination are you doing? Right now I'm doing PCM stroke ICT. Okay. Yeah. Why PCM? I have very a very good interest in physics and particularly what drove me into that I have interest for aviation, so that's why I decided to go into physics. Oh, uh, you want to be a pilot? A pilot or anything connected to aviation. Okay. Do you know some of the things that are done in aviation apart from a pilot? We have mechanical engineers who are there and also we have aircraft engineers because aviation has very, very many parts because most people know about the pilots but there's a lot of groundwork and I think I've taken time to research about such parts. Then we also have software engineers for the aircraft systems. So I would also love to engage in such items. Okay, what inspired you to take on uh, aviation as a career? What inspired me? Actually, as I was growing up, I kept on getting, I, wherever I would look at a plane, it put so much love for me. You know, when you love something, maybe if someone maybe loves a book, when they look at it, they, it will arouse interest in them. So you used so, to be one of these kids that used to see the aeroplanes up there and scream, aeroplane, de aeroplane, <laughs> huh? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> okay. Mm. All right. So that put so much interest in me. So I would love to maybe pursue that direction. Okay. Yeah. All right. So are there any challenges you're facing so far? Challenges. With the combination you're doing. 
challenges. Actually, since I'm so much in love with what I'm doing, I'm not having any problems. Because whoever you love these science subjects, in turn they will love you. And something I've experienced with physics, chemistry, and mathematics. Whatever you love something, it will always love you back. And even if it doesn't love you back, you can still try to go for it. And usually, it's not. It's all about the process. And usually, if you can do well in that process, the final results will always be good. Okay. And how does Shafiq's achievement of the scholarship inspire you? Actually, Shafiq has inspired me ever since 2018, even before he got oh, that so scholarship. So you've known him this long? Actually, because I came here in 2016 and he was just a year above me. So I remember he topped the country in the math contest in 2018. And actually, that's when we got to interact more with him, because I would see a genius. Usually, if you see those people perform well in the math contest, they tend to be very bright people, for sure, very, very bright people. Because that's when you're deficient between someone who's just good in class and someone who's a genius. Okay. So I was attracted to him because of his being a genius. And from that, he has been my friend. And actually, I was so motivated to see him and to see him get that scholarship. That showed me that even our students of this school and all students outside there, if they love what they are doing, they can easily get such opportunities. Okay. So do you believe you're a genius too? Perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. we could be one. <laughs> yeah, I could be one. Maybe I'm yet to discover that. <laughs> okay, do you hope to get a scholarship as well? I hope to get one. I hope to get one. Are you working hard to get that scholarship? Yeah, I'm working hard because we've, we've been briefed about what it takes involving oneself in maybe activities outside class. Because usually, if you look at our systems, actually maybe the Ugandan system, it's more about the work inside class, but actually being in this school, we've actually been encouraged to take part in many activities outside school, maybe be it charity events, be it STEM projects, be it participating in many clubs. So we've taken that, we've taken such chances and we hope to boost our chances of getting to such places just like Kayemba. Okay, just like Kayemba, have you participated in any contests yet? Of course, I've participated in a month mathematics contest since primary seven even in all level and i also participated in the recent mathematics contest education is the most powerful and important aspect of life and it allows us to learn the world around us the world inside us and the world within us and remember the roots of education are bitter but the fruits are sweet you could be the next kayemba shafiq that was the end of the education forum until next time bye bye